Yo, what's up, homies? It's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. This video, we're going to be talking about second normal form. Now, before we discuss second normal form, we need to remind ourselves of what a dependency is. Essentially, a dependency is when something depends on something else. And in databases, that would be like an attribute describing an entity. So if we have an entity, we have attributes that describe this entity. This is a dependency. The attribute depends on the entity. Now when, we're just, now when we're drawing this, you often see it as like, let's say, the ID, right? So the ID describes the entity. Then we have the email, for example. The email depends on the ID. Even though the arrow is drawn this way, this is saying when we change the ID from, let's say, 7 to 8, the email is going to change because it's talking about a different user. So if I lost you already, don't worry about that. I'm going to go through an example to make more sense. But essentially, you have to know that a dependency means when the thing we're talking about changes, the data describing it will also change. It's a very simple concept, almost so simple that we don't think about it, and then we get confused when we start talking about different types of dependencies. The reason it's important to kind of refresh your brain on this is that second normal form discusses a type of dependencies known as partial dependencies. Now, partial dependencies come in when we have compound or composite primary keys. Now, a composite key is a key that consists of multiple columns. So let's say this over here is a column, and this over here is a column, and these are in a table, right? And we could say that the combination of both of these columns are going to be the primary key. This other column is in here because it depends on the primary key. But when we have composite keys, it actually has to depend on both of the columns. If for any reason it only depends on one of the columns, we have what's known as a partial dependency. You will most often see second normal form come up when we have a many-to-many -many relationship. And let's go through an example now. In the previous videos, we discussed a database for a website where you can list items and sell them. And when we discussed many-to-many -many relationships, we made it so that a user could list something and share that listing with another user. So basically joint ownership of this item. So let's say I go on there and list the laptop and I want to split the profit with me and somebody else. So we have joint ownership of this listing. We had a many to many relationship. Let's draw that out and kind of refresh our brains. Over here we had the users, over here we had the listings, and to amend this many to many relationship we broke it up into two one-to-many relationships. So it looked like this. And this intermediary table was called user listings. So let's label the tables. Now the primary key in this table is actually a combination of a user and a listing. That's because you can think of this table as an association table. Once you associate a user with a listing, you're not going to have to do it a second time. So over here we'll have a user ID and a listing ID and then the combination in here. Now, just for fun, let's say we have another column in this table. And we're running out of space, so let's just kind of blow it up down here. So this here is this table. Just expand it a little bit more. So we added this column here, listing date. This is essentially going to record when the listing was created. The problem is that this listing date only depends on half of the primary key. Remember that the combination of these two are the primary key but listing date is dependent only on listing ID. This is an example of a partial dependency. This kind of information does not belong in this table. It actually belongs in the listings table. That's because you could say what date and time the listing was created once for one individual listing. The reason you don't want it in here is because it's not relevant to the user ID as well. So what kind of data would you put in this table then? So second normal form would tell us to get rid of this column and put it in a different table that is relevant to just this part. Whenever you have something underscore, <laughs> it's, it's a good giveaway of what you're trying to describe. The listing. It doesn't say listing user. It doesn't say user. It just says listing. Therefore, the chances are it's supposed to go in the listings table. But what kind of data would be appropriate in this table? I want to put data in this table to show you guys what would belong here, but I don't want to break second normal form. Well, we need to find some kind of data that depends on the listing ID and the user ID. That means the data in here 
only describes the association between the user and the listing. So an example of a column might be the percentage of income when the item is sold. So let's go through some specific data so you can see how this works. Let me clean this up a little bit. Percent share. This would not go inside of a listing table. That's because it depends on which user. If an item, let's say we have a bicycle, and this is being sold by two people, we couldn't say a specific percentage inside of the listing table. For example, if we said 80%, is that discussing this user or is it discussing this user? We don't really know, so that's not very clear. That's why you wouldn't want to put something like the percentage share inside of the listing table. At the same time, you wouldn't want to put it in the user table though, because you might have one user selling multiple items. So he is selling a cheeseburger and some pizza. Yeah, I'm from America, don't judge me. And if you just gave a number such as 80% share, well, does that describe the hamburger or the pizza? It, it doesn't belong inside of the user table. That means this data actually belongs to the association of the user and the listing. So let's say we have the user ID of seven, the listing ID of 13, and a user ID of 12, we'll make them both owners of a bicycle. So the user ID would be seven, the listing ID 13, and then user ID of 12, listing ID of 13. So going back to the picture I just erased, this bike would have the ID of 13. The users would have the IDs of seven and 12. Now we can give it a percent share. We could say that the guy with the ID of seven gets a 40% share. That means if the bike sells for $100, this guy is going to get $40. And we can give him a percent share of 60. And totaling, this adds up to 100, which would make sense. Unless, obviously, we're gonna add fees, so psh. So this percentage, we could say it describes the income after we subtract the fees. <laughs> so this kind of data is appropriate for this table. Hopefully that makes sense for you guys. That is second normal form. Just remember to get rid of any partial dependencies. And whenever you have a composite primary key, go through all of your attributes and ask yourself, does this belong here? Does it describe all of the columns inside of the primary key? If it does, it's appropriate. If it doesn't, it's not appropriate and you need to put it somewhere else. So thanks guys. That's all for second normal form. Be sure to check out the next video because we will be discussing third normal form. Thanks guys and I will see you then. Oh, and uh, if you want to help me out, click like and subscribe.